cool. So we're going to start with the cashier facing portion of the solution, and then we'll switch over to the back office and reporting and inventory after that. OK. Um, and then I'm, I'm using keyboard and mouse uh, just for demo purposes. You know, typically this is all done through the touch screen. Um, our system does work with keyboard, attached keyboard and all of that. Uh, but, you know, most most stores are doing the touch screen. Yep. Got it. Uh, so right on the surface here, uh, employees can clock in and out. Uh, it's a built-in time clock, whether you know it's just clocking in and out for shift, uh, clocking out for lunch, that sort of thing. Um, so we can track the employee time keeping. And then there's a separate uh, kind of training mode, which is like a simulated mode of the POS, where you know if you want to try something or maybe a new cashier wants to train, um, they can do that, and it won't affect any of the reporting. It won't change any of the inventory counts. It won't affect any of the sales report. It's just kind of like a sandbox version of of the POS. Um, and then every user gets their own sign-in code, their own unique sign-in code, and you can set permissions or restrictions based on what you want them to have access to, what you don't, maybe you know what needs manager uh, override or approval, something like that. Okay. So when we first log in, this is kind of the main cashier facing screen. And just to kind of walk us through uh, what we're looking at here, um, so this entire left-hand portion of the screen will show to the customer on a separate customer facing display. Okay. Um, they won't see any of the buttons on the right. Uh, that's only uh, for the cashier screen. Yes. And our system's super fast with like scanning, with you know uh, manual item entry, PLU entry, that sort of thing. Uh, but one of our core kind of, I guess, competencies and functionalities is scale integration. So right in the bottom left here, we integrate directly into the scanner scales, into the tabletop scales, the label printing, price printing, deli scales. Our system can work with all of those. Mm. Um, so I'm just adding a few items here. Uh, you know, I, I did those basically via just typing in a PLU code, but obviously we could do scanning. And then there's a separate customizable product lookup menu. And this is great for produce or anything that doesn't have like a barcode, um, right. you know, or scannable, scannable UPC. You can basically set up your own categories here, add products, even upload your own pictures for those products. Um, and it just makes it, you know, really easy. You don't have to memorize a bunch of PLU codes. Um, we can just use that that product look lookup menu. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, and then a oh, a couple other things right here. So we have our total, obviously, right there. But right below that's a separate FS total. That's food stamp or EBT total. Um, so you okay. know, if we have a combination of items that maybe some are eligible and some are not eligible for EBT food stamp, okay. um, th this will segment those. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you just answered one hour question, actually. That's good. Thank you, sir. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it will, like, so for example, let's say I had a, a non eligible item for EBT on here, it would not let me pay for that with EBT, right? It'll segment those tenders, so they'll have to use cash credit or okay. something else. Okay, so, great. Yeah, cool. so they can, we can see the total separation there, and then it'll, it will backstop the cashier, so we won't oh. accidentally do that. Um, Beyond that, we have a built-in customer database. Uh, so this is great if you wanted to set up like uh, even just sort of a lightweight like membership or loyalty rewards program, or even you know you can take it a step further. We support like full wholesale customers. If you yeah, sell to yeah. any other businesses, we can support. Yeah, those. That, that, that was another one of my questions. So you're yeah. you're on fire. Man. All right, good. <laughs> I've been doing this a little bit now. <laughs> yeah, looking good so far, sir. Great, great. So, um, Kevin, for that customer royalty, that's we in the in the future. If we want to do those, you know, like I give them a card, a like Kroger or something, that's what that's mm -hmm. for. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And then, like, basically, they can your customers can earn points. Uh, you know, they they spend a dollar at your store, they earn one point, and then you can kind of create incentives in exchange for those points. So just for example, I think I have a thousand points gets $10 off, or it can be like 5% off, you know, so percentage amount off, um, or you can, you can not even do the points at all. Like we have some stores that just do it as like a customer tracking type. Thing. Yeah, that, that was a question. So I was, I was uh, interested in having something like that for our wholesale um, mm -hmm. that to do like a, a backtracking data of what they ordered, how much they spend, um, along those lines so that's something we're we're able to to do through, through that button definitely yep yep so you can see here like my my customer edward has a has a customer balance yeah uh, and so like we can basically for your wholesale customers they can pay on and off that balance um, okay. you, they could essentially have like a 
uh, you know, like a house account with you yeah. and in the uh, back office, there's like a, a statement okay. that could be printed out so you can bill them at the end of the month or however you want to do okay. it. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah, and we support, um, we support all the major tender types. So cash, credit, debit, gift card, check, EBT, food stamp, um, you know, paid on account. Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Wallet, all the wireless NFC payments are are supported as well. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. cool. And our pin pads are super fast. The last one that I like physically tested myself, it was like maybe half a second or one second. You know, you put in the card and it, it runs it and then it, it tells prompts the customer to remove the card. So it's a pretty fast uh, pin pad device also. Okay. Mm. Um, so a few other features kind of beyond the surface here. Um, we were the first uh, company to kind of color code the POS screen as well. So if I void our avocado item here, you'll notice that it's now in red um, and the designator to the right VD void uh, just makes it super easy for cashier and customer to follow along, you know, with that with that transaction. Okay. We're going to go ahead and complete this transaction. I opted to uh, as cash as the tender here. And you, you notice his total 798. It's giving me all the common kind of breakdowns here. So if they hand me eight bucks, if they hand me a 10, a 20, you know, I can just hit that and boom, we know what the change is. Uh, we're ready to go. Okay. Um, now being kind of a grocery set at them uh, from the front end, obviously we could do that from the back office also, but sometimes, you know, you're up front, it's just easier to knock it out. Mm. Um, obviously adding customers, uh, pay out the vendors directly from the front till here. Um, now this synchronization button, let me talk a little bit about just the technology of the system. Um, so our system has a cloud-based back office, but this, this application we're looking at here is a local Windows application. So it's very, very stable. You know, if the internet cuts out, this application stays exactly like this. Um, mm -hmm. All of the data that we're inputting, right? All of the sales data, the customer data, the inventory is getting adjusted as we're selling things. All of those data changes synchronize to the back office um, automatically. So every minute or two, there's that, uh, it's synchronizing all that data to the back office. All the new data in the back office is being synchronized to the front registers. Um, and you do not have to do anything. That'll happen automatically um, mm -hmm. every couple of minutes. So the back office data is pretty close to live, not completely live, but pretty close to it. And then if there was ever a reason, you know, you wanted to force that synchronization, you made yeah. your last change and you want to go home, you can just hit sync, uh, hit that synchronization button and it'll it'll force that sync. So you always have the option to do both. It'll do it for you or you can prompt it if needed. Cool. Even, you know, a lot of stores will have just like a dedicated 4G, 5G hotspot backup, like right at their router. So if there's ever an issue, it right. just switches automatically. So yeah, yeah. definitely do okay. Um. And then gift manager. So we support like fully integrated gift cards. So these would be gift cards that are like branded to your store. They can only be used at your store. Um, you know, they're all of your store's logo picture, however you want to design it on it. Um, and we can, you know, load the balance from the register, preload them, check the balance, um, you know, all, all of that stuff from here as well. Okay. Um, so that's kind of my general run through of, of the front end portion. But did, did we have any remaining questions about this section? Um, alternatively, we can always come back in the future if we need to. Uh, but then you, oh, that was pretty clear. Yeah, Thank you. Clear. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Excellent. Good, good. Yeah. All right. Give, give me one second. I'm going to drop this screen and pull up another one. Are we able to see the new screen here? Yes. Perfect. Um, so this is the back office component. Um, and this is accessible, you know, from your from your mobile device, from your tablet, from your from your uh, PC at home, you know, laptop at the coffee shop. If you have an internet connection, you can get to the back office. Okay. Uh, when we first log in, this is the kind of page we're met with. We, we're met with a real nice dashboard that gives us a snapshot of the store's performance for the day. Some starter figures at the top, and then some visual tools to help digest that information. Uh, this is showing us number of transactions over time. We can flip that over and see kind of the revenue over time as well. Mm. And then scrolling down, we have our kind of revenue by department breakdown. Okay. And then top, cool. top selling products below that. Uh, so right on the surface, right, we can kind of get a good, good, uh, you know, finger on the pulse of the store, uh, you know, for the day, just through the dashboard. 
now all the navigation is on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, we have a full inventory and store management section as well as really, really good reporting, extensive reporting. Uh, we'll start with the reporting and then I'll circle back uh, to the inventory. Um, so a couple key components about um, our system is that we never override or delete the data. Um, so it's it's being stored perpetually. You can go as far back in time, you know, from when the system was put in place and view data and all okay. of it can be exported, right? So we can download it as a spreadsheet CSV file um, or as a PDF file if needed. Um, either way, we don't strong arm the data from you. It's very easy to access it. Uh, this is a sample end of day report uh, showing us, you know, those department breakdown numbers, any taxes and fees that are collected, you know, all the kind of the details of, of any of the money in and out throughout the day, and then itemized uh, tender breakdown, so itemized card tender breakdown as well, and cashier deposit info. Pretty standard mm. end of day report. Um, we can do that same report as like an end of week, so like a seven day or a multi day version of that report. And then we also have uh, our store sales section. So store sales, product sales, and product movement are like the three big um, kind of report categories. Um, so in our products, oops, where did that go? Oh, in our product sales section, um, we can view kind of the performance of products. Uh, throughout a, any given time period, um, whether we're looking at products that have sold by showing our movers, we can see products that have not shown, not sold by selecting non-movers. Uh, so this is going to show us all the unsold products. We can also, you know, sort by our most profitable products, sort by our quantity sold. Uh, really powerful tool just to see how, you know, what products are actually selling, what's bringing in the money, what's bringing in, uh, you know, the foot traffic. And it could be filtered by department. It could be filtered by vendor. Uh, it's a really, really powerful tool here. Um, and we can even take it a step deeper um, if we wanted to look up a product more, more in depth. Um, our product movement report um, will allow us to do that. So I'm looking at our fresh salmon fillets here at about a three month, um, three month time period, and it's showing us month over month, you know, this year to last year, exactly how much we sold. Uh, you know, what our cost was, what our revenue, what our profit was on these items. And you'll oh. notice uh, it's reporting out in weight, right? It's saying I sold, you know, 71 pounds last year. Um, so this item sold by weight. So the inventory is tracked by weight. Uh, if it was sold by unit, we could track it by unit, uh, so on and so on. Okay. That's nice. That's nice. Cool. And uh, Kevin, on this page, uh, let's say, same thing for this fresh salmon flakes. If, mm -hmm. if we got the product from the wholesaler, we want to put that into the system. I mean, do we have to manually type the name or we can just scan it and let it go in? Or that's something you're going to go over with us later? I'll go over it, uh, but I can just show it pretty quick. You don't need to type it in. You can scan it. So okay. a lot of times our stores will have like a, a Bluetooth scanner hooked up to a back office computer or back office device, or even yeah. we have like mobile devices with scanners built in. And yeah. so you could just scan the box, boom, it'll pull it up and then click yeah. receive. Yeah, the like mobile two. one. Yes. Cool. Yeah, the mobile one's the easiest. I think that's the fastest yeah. way. Boop, 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 yeah. you know, and then, yep, definitely product comes in or new product, you know, how to get it in the system. Okay. Use mobile scanner. You scan oh, for okay. the hybrid thing, you just put the price there. You know. mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And when we're first, so when we're first setting up a store, um, the, the one thing we'll try to do is an import, which is where we put all the items on a spreadsheet and uh, basically import them into the system all at once. Um, and we can work with your vendors to get the item data. You know, there's a lot of different ways we can get that. And uh, that's like the fast way to set it. But that's for mostly the initial setup. Gotcha. So, cool. Out. Thank you, Kevin. Or like, you know, down the line, if you get a brand new vendor, right, maybe they supply an item file, you can just kick it in here. Um, yeah, so we got a few few options there. Um, so beyond our standard kind of, you know, products and store sales data, uh, there's a few other reporting tools in here. Um, this one right here, um, our hourly sales report, it shows our number of transactions over time, uh, right? So we can kind of see visually when the busiest time of day is, and that you know can help with scheduling cashier staff and making sure we have people up front 
uh, to check people out at these busy times. Mm. There's also a separate report for any discounts that are ever issued. Um, and then the gift card report, which will show, you know, gift card amounts, what's left to be redeemed. So the liability or amount um, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and the electronic journal is where essentially we can view almost live transactions. So I can click on any one of these transactions here and view the actual receipt for that uh, for that sale. Um, we don't store all of the credit card data just for PCI right. compliance versions. So it's just the stripped ID data, but that's usually all you need. Yes. And we do support the uh, signature capture so they can sign like right right on the pin pad and it'll show the signature at the bottom too if you have okay. that set up. Um, and what's neat about this electronic journal is it's entirely searchable. So you can filter it by you know customer, by employee, by I had a store that they had a, one of their vendors uh, recalled one of their products. And so they were able to look up who purchased that product uh, through this journal here. Mm, that's cool. Very nice. Um, oh yeah, and then we also have a direct integration into the QuickBooks Online okay. platform. Okay, cool. That's good. Um, so yeah, we talked a little bit about importing uh, the products when we're first getting, uh, you know, the store set up. Yes. Uh, beyond that, there's a few things we can do once we've actually seen uh, or once we have the items, you know, into the store or once the data is into the store. Um, I'm in the products maintenance section here, um, and this just allows us to view settings on a product. Uh, we can make changes to it. We can see the inventory quantity. Um, so I'll just walk us through some of the stuff here. So basic product information, uh, right below that, there's like a mini uh, performance report or sales report. So you know exactly how much you're selling of these individual products, um, you know, right before you make a change. Uh, we can obviously track all of your vendors and, and the associated items with those vendors. Track the quantity on hand amount. So as you sell through these, these products, this number will reduce automatically. And then we can alert you when you're running low past a certain threshold. Okay. Uh, you know. So then uh, there's basically a separate report I'll show you in a second that'll uh, tell you all the items that are you know, running low that have hit that kind of threshold amount number. Mm. We can also do what's called scheduled pricing. So this is where, you know, maybe I want the price to change uh, this weekend uh, or may and, you know, uh, go up or down, uh, you know, just for the weekend. You can schedule that pricing out. Um, we can also there's a number of different pricing methods. So whether it's just like a unit sale price, um, a group price would be like three for five, you know, something like that. Limited pricing, they can only buy one or two at that price. Uh, so a lot of pricing configuration options. And we do support ID check, age verification at the register. If you sell any tobacco, alcohol, any age restricted items, those can be tracked as well. Got it. And got a lot of setting options. Um, we have a full development team, a, a full technical support staff as well. So we're constantly improving these products. We're constantly adding new features. You know, when stores give us feedback that they need the solution to work a certain way, we, we really try to listen and implement those recommendations. Um, so this is where, you know, we'll flag if an item needs to be uh, weighed on the scale, if it's eligible for EBT food stamp, if it's eligible for discount. We can even track the expiration dates of products, any taxes or fees that are applied, and then product modifiers. This is where, like, if you scan that product, it'll basically, these options come up, right? So is it, like, small, medium, or large, or maybe there's a flavor option, so just product modif modifiers. Now, all these changes or all these fields and categories we're seeing in product maintenance, um, we can update in bulk in the mass product editor. Uh, so this is a big time saver if I'm making price changes, as opposed mm -hmm. to looking up a product one at a time. You know, maybe I select the department I'm working on, select yeah. the vendor I'm working on, and I can just go down the list here, you know, and update my prices as needed. And once I've made all my changes, we can click save and it'll update them in bulk. Okay. Same thing if we're updating the cost, maybe we're adjusting our inventory counts, maybe we're scheduling pricing out, anything. You can make those changes in bulk and save them here, kind of easy. Um, we also support uh, label printing as well for the shelf, shelf tag label, shelf price labels. Um, typically, most stores will use a print software like Bartender or Avery or something, but our system will extract all the data needed for those labels. Um, and kick it onto a file for us. Um, 
so this is that receiving process we talked a little bit about earlier, but basically, you know, you could select a vendor. Um, if you have a purchase order already created, we could pull that up. If not, like we talked about, you could just scan, um, you know, scan for the item. Once you've scanned it, enter the number of cases, or maybe we're not receiving cases. Maybe we only ordered two units, so we could, you know, order those units. Um, oops, forgot to name our, our thing. And then, you know, move on to the next item, right? So now I can go and scan the next item. Okay. Enter the amount we're receiving of that. If the item sold by pound, maybe we receive it by pound. And then just keep going down the list, right? Scan the next item. Once we've scanned all the items that we've received, we just hit the receive button. We get a worksheet printout and everything. All those balance numbers are updated in the back end now. Okay. Now in the instance that we're removing an item from inventory, but it was not sold, um, maybe it was used for store store use or shelf display. Maybe it was damaged or expired or stolen. Um, either way, we can track all of those discrepancies. Um, you know, so if I take my apple here, maybe we say that this item was damaged. You know, got kicked around on the floor or something. Mm. So we can remove these from inventory uh, via shrinking. Um, now they're out of the inventory and later on we can go back and look and see, okay, this is this is the items we lost to shrink, right? These were damaged, these were stolen, these were used for store use. Um, so really good tracking of all the inventory, whether it was, you know, actually sold to a customer, maybe it just moved places, uh, whatever the case may be. Mm. This low inventory report is going to populate um, all those items that you're running low on. So you set that threshold number and it'll populate all those items. You can sort it by vendor. Um, you can easily export this as a, as a CSV. We have stores that'll export this as a CSV and send it right to their vendor to reorder. Um, we also have a purchase order builder built into the system. Um, so if I'm ordering, you know, something new from UNFI, I can select UNFI, create my new PO name. add my PO. And then from here, all I need to do is hit low inventory fill. It'll take all those products that are low on inventory and add them to my purchase order automatically. Oh, just, okay. yeah, I just saved a bunch of time there. I just got to update my quantities and, and hit duplicate. And we're ready to go. Um, this is a really valuable report, the inventory value report. Basically, it multiplies your quantity on hand by your cost value. So you know, in actual dollars and cents, how much of a product you have sitting on the shelf. So using that same example, if my, let's say my apples are expiring, um, you know, we can see that we have a certain amount on the shelf and it's expiring. Okay, we have $1,800 of products expiring, right? Or whatever the product is. So really uh, handy information here to see in, you know, tangible numbers, what, how much of a product you have um, in dollars on the shelf. Mm. Um, so this is more like the store management and setup section, uh, but all of your employees can be added into this system um, and then they can each be assigned a role and you can create, modify and edit these roles as you see fit. So you can have, you can add a lot more, you can have very few, a lot. Um, and it basically allows you to give access or deny access to almost every button or feature uh, that we saw on both the front register um, and the back office as well. So for your cashier roles, you know, you can give them access to certain things, deny them access to other things. And then, you know, maybe you have an employee that does receiving in the back office. You know, we can give them just access to receiving and they won't even see these other links when they log in here. Okay. Uh, this is the customer section, so your customers. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through what we're looking at here. So just some basic customer information. This can all be collected from the front end or the back office area. Um, we can flag for tax tax exempt if they're a wholesale customer, um, as well as adjust their in-store charge account balance if needed. Um, and, you know, edit loyalty points as well as set an expiration date if it's like a paid membership type program. Um, we can also set up uh, Pricing level discounts, if they have a, a discount level, uh, you know, you can set that up through here. You can view their total purchases um, and then uh, check writing capability if you want any customers to be able to write checks. There's a separate customer report that shows all the surface data. So um, basically all, all the customer data will populate here that we can see, you know, their uh, number of visits throughout our time period, their total spent. 
Um, we can export and download this list out if needed, uh, but we can go a little bit more in depth on our wholesale customers. Um, let me back up my date range here a little bit. So we can see Edward Albee, one of our wholesale customers, you know, he has a transaction. Uh, we can, here's where we can view essentially his monthly statement. So it'll show us all of the individual transactions that he's made and the amount charged for those transactions. Um, looks like I've been doing a lot of testing, buying pudding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll just show that. And then at the bottom, there's like a total amount due and everything. Okay. Um, in the administrative section, uh, we're not going to go too deep because there's just a lot of settings here. But one thing I want to I want to mention is that there's no limit to the number of items you have in the system, number of departments, number of vendors, number of employees. Um, system's pretty wide open when we give it to you. Um, we're priced by the individual checkout lane or station, um, and you have unlimited back office seats. So um, the you know system's really kind of built. To scale, you know, for with your store, if your store grows, you know, the system can grow with you right there. Um, just a couple of things on the department side, all of those item properties that we saw on product maintenance, we can ap apply across entire departments. Um, you know, so we can, you know, if everything in the produce department is eligible for food stamp, we can, you know, flag that whole department. And then every item that goes in there retains those um, individual uh, properties. This is where we can customize that product lookup menu. So you can add your own categories, um, you know, upload products, add pictures for those products. Um, you know, I, I have an item picture database that I can supply as well. Uh, this is just kind of a cool, cool way to, you know, add those produce or any, any item that doesn't have a barcode could go here. Uh, you know, prepared food items, deli items, stuff like that. Mm. POS manager, this is just where a lot of the settings live. Um, when I, when I first started with the company four or five years ago, there was a lot, lot less, uh, you know, buttons and configuration options. So it really is a testament that we, you know, continue to actively develop and uh, build out this product. Um, at the very bottom here, with a single click, we can export the entire item database. Um, so that'll kick out a CSV file with all of our products and products data, uh, which is really helpful if you're setting up like an e-commerce if you want to sell online. Um, our system supports that. We have an API integration for, for e-commerce sales and a great partnership with Local Express um, for e-commerce service. And we also have 24-7 uh, technical support. Uh, so our technical support's always available. Um, it's all US-based and it, they're all direct employees. None of it's outsourced. None of it's going to another company. Um, you know, you call our tech support line and our technicians answer the phone ready to help. So that's uh, kind of my general run through. Would, would, did you have any remaining questions or any sections that you wanted to go uh, back over, maybe more in depth? That's pretty, it's pretty thorough, pretty yeah. comprehensive. Uh, Great. Kevin, one, one part you said that there is a, like a mobile device, it also has a scanner on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That mobile, is that mobile device, is like a phone? We can also check like inventory on that or like the yeah. manage hold that. That's exactly right. Um, give me one second. I'm going to pull up just kind of like a picture of. What... Um, so yeah, it's like a it's a mobile Android device. There's a scanner yeah. built into the top. Yeah. And then just like you said, so it can do receiving. It can do price checking, price adjustments, inventory. So you can take you know quantity counts with it. Um, there's a printer it can link up with for for label printing if you wanted to kick out a shelf label. Yeah, yes. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, these are pretty cool. Um, and then yeah, with the attached printer, you know, pretty easy for price or uh, shelf labels and stuff like that. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, I guess Kevin, if right now, I mean, the software part, we're 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 pretty good. Maybe we run into other questions, but I guess I really think your software should cover yeah, well, our, everything our we need, yeah. right? For POS, choose the best. With IT retail, rise above the rest. The point of sale software that you're looking for, bringing you peace of mind and so on.